Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Kristen and today we are in Oasis Springs and I am doing a Mediterranean style family home and these homes I don't do very often but I love doing these style homes. Um, something about Mediterranean homes are just so pretty and like tropical and I just love them and so I had a lot of fun building this a couple of days ago and I hope you guys enjoy watching it as well. So on this channel I think I've done like two Mediterranean style builds and one was a starter home so I couldn't go crazy and I think it was base game only too. And then the other family home that I did was like a really big home. It was like a mansion. It, it turned out pretty good. But that was base game only and so I can't go as crazy on the clutter and the different you know the different items and stuff as I can when I'm doing just any packs so I decided on this build um, since I don't do it very often I wanted to go ahead and do a Mediterranean style house with any packs that I pleased and so it's probably pretty pack heavy um, but I think it turned out really cute and if you guys like the exterior and stuff, you totally can download this off of the gallery even if you don't have every single pack and I believe it'll just be missing those items. So everything will pretty much be the same besides, you know, the items that are in the packs that you guys don't have. <laughs> um, I don't think I looked at how many packs are in this build. Um, I haven't really posted it on the gallery yet but it will be on the gallery before as you guys are watching this at least so it's available to download now if you're interested and yeah so the exterior of this build I something about Mediterranean style houses are harder for me to build than like suburban style houses and I really don't know why I think it's like I don't really know how to position and design the exterior walls and stuff for suburban houses you can really just do any pop out walls anywhere and you know change the roof color to whatever you know shingles and just there's more options with design for suburban style houses and for Mediterranean style houses, you kind of have to stay in a certain realm and certain design for it to actually look like a Mediterranean style house. Like, obviously you have to have the tile roof. Um, I don't know of any Mediterranean style house that doesn't have that tile roof. That is like the main thing on Mediterranean style houses that is like, you know for a fact that's a Mediterranean style house, you know? And then they always have like stucco walls. You can't put paneling or really brick unless it's like a certain type of brick. There's a certain brick in the base game that works perfect for a Mediterranean style house, but most likely you'll find stucco on the outside of a Mediterranean style house. And I don't know, I love Mediterranean style houses in real life, but they are so hard to duplicate in The Sims for some reason, and it's just, all of the walls are different heights, and it's just hard. But with that being said, I do love the way that this house turned out, as well as like the other house that I built that was base game only. If you guys are interested in seeing a base game only Mediterranean style house, then definitely take a look at my gallery it, or not my gallery but my channel page and you'll find probably was like the second video I ever posted so it'll be pretty easy to find and um, I definitely want to start building them more often <laughs> I love the way that this turned out I also want to try building in Tartosa that is not something I have done yet I think I've when my wedding stories first came out I think I built a starter home and that was it and I think it's just a hard style to build and I could never build and make it look good and so I just gave up and I don't play in Tartosa very often for that reason and so I kind of want to go and try to build a house in Tartosa now. I think this style house in Tartosa would have been so pretty so I'm probably going to try to duplicate it a little bit with some changes here and there. But let's go ahead and get a little bit into this build. The exterior is pretty much built. <laughs> we are working in the backyard now and 
I wrapped around that fence around the whole lot and I did something that I have never done and so I put the fence around the whole lot like I was saying and around the driveway I I fenced in the driveway almost like you can pull in if figuratively speaking anyways because as we know Sims cannot drive but if this was like The Sims 2 or something um, or real life then like you would be able to pull in the driveway and then walk through that gate that's right there and I thought that was a really cute detail to add and so when I came up with that idea I just I just stuck with it I really didn't know what I was doing in this build if I'm being totally honest this was a lot of like trial and error and so I have deleted some of the video I kind of edited some of the video out so that you didn't see so much trial and error it would just take forever to get through the speed build if I left everything but I did leave the important parts at least and something else that you'll find a lot in these Mediterranean style builds is this like tile and so I took advantage of the tile and uh, we don't have I don't think we have any grass on this whole lot and I didn't really realize that until I already placed a lot of the tile and I loved the way it looks. This isn't something I do really at all. Even in the last Mediterranean style build that I did, it didn't have this much tile. I did have quite a bit of tile, but it didn't cover the whole lot like it did here, but I thought it looked really cute and like, I love the color of that tile too. I think I do end up changing it to the darker pink if I'm not mistaken, but they're pretty much the same, you know? It's not much of a difference. And uh, this backyard here, I had no idea how to design the corner of it over by that tree with the lanterns. Right now, the lanterns are there, but I do swap that tree out to the regular one, and that's because I add some like fairy lights around the whole fence in the backyard and then I also pull out that little like the Florinda pergola um, I love that pergola I think it's so pretty and I don't get to use it very often because I don't do these Mediterranean builds as often as I need to and I just can't make that pergola work with just a regular suburban house it it's just looking too tropical you know and so it looks perfect with a Mediterranean style house and so I had to take advantage of that and use one and um, here is where I'm pulling out the fairy lights that, like I was talking about I think it's so cute surrounding like a patio with these fairy lights I love doing that I do this quite often really in the suburban houses that I do as well I just think it's so pretty it makes me want to get some fairy lights like that in real life and put it out on my back porch but I don't know I just can't bring myself to buy it <laughs> to be totally honest um, fairy lights aren't really that cheap when you need a whole bunch to like go around your whole like porch or whatever but now we are jumping ahead so I cut some of it out and that is just because this floor plan kicked my butt I like was um, I wanted to do something kind of unique with the platforms and stuff and so since the front of the build I kind of put that front porch on like six or seven stairs you know there's like six or seven stairs when you first enter the house and so it's on a pretty high platform and I did that purposely because I just thought it looked really cool <laughs> and um, I love doing like the high stairs in front of houses I just there's something about it it just looks really pretty to me and um, this floor plan with like the platforms and the windows where they are there was just something about it that made me have to like do a floor plan and then delete it and do it again and so I just cut all that out it would have just taken far too long and honestly there was no need for you guys to watch me struggle that bad <laughs> um, you guys watch me struggle enough on this channel um, and so here it's kind of started getting put together here so I as you can see I did a lot of like platform work in this build and it's not looking like too much right now <laughs> but it definitely gets better trust me I use a lot of this tile and I almost did every floor in the house with this tile but that looked way too like samey you know 
and so I decided to kind of bring it out with some of the dark wood and you guys will see that here in a little bit as I go throughout the build I add more of the wood in certain places and it looks really good and so I almost decided to do just one step down on the living room but I love having the like the double steps was able to figure out exactly how to position it. I almost put it to where you had to go down the living room and then back up to get to the dining room, I believe is how I had it at one point. And it just looked way too much, you know? And so I decided to cut out the whole step down part from when you first enter the house and you go to the living room. I just ditched that idea altogether. And I decided to do like an open hallway. This floor plan also is very, very open. I don't know if that is a feature that Mediterranean style houses usually have or not. I've never actually been inside one. And uh, believe it or not, yes, I live in Florida, but we don't all have houses like this. <laughs> and I've never actually been inside one, like I was saying. And so I don't know if an open floor plan is a feature of a Mediterranean style house or not, or if they're more likely to have a closed floor plan. But in this Mediterranean style house, there is very much an open floor plan. And I think it worked out really good. Open floor plans is also something that I don't do very often. A lot of the time I add like archways and stuff like that. I just find it easier to do a floor plan when you use archways. And Something about open floor plans is difficult for me. <laughs> um, I just feel like it looks way too open and it really worked with this house. And so I was really pleased about that and that little like hallway section, uh, when you first get up the stairs and there's like bedrooms all around and then that like diagonal piece heads to a hallway part for you to get outside here. And yes, I did add a little ladder and I figured the teenager that lives in this house and all the children and infants, um, when they grew up to be teenagers, they could probably use that to sneak out. That was my intention anyways. If I ever add a ladder onto a porch like that using the high school years pack ladder, um, sometimes I'll do it with base game too, with a base game ladder. But especially the high school years ladder that makes it look like it's kind of like a you know, I don't know what you call those things, but they are always on the side of houses and they have vines growing through it. The total intention for them building, making that in the high school years pack was the whole sneak out thing. And so I love including that on the builds that I make. And so I wanted to take advantage of it and I did it on this build and I think it looks so cute. And I also added the one that have the vines growing up it. So it blends in with the house more so it looks like it's meant to be that way and so yeah um that archway like I, the whole reason why I was telling you guys that was because I wanted to explain I was going to do away with that archway that was there and so I don't believe I use archways in any part of this whole build and so that's that's new for me I don't do that often and I think it turned out really good um I love the step down for you to get to the dining room right there I think that is so pretty and I think I end up changing that flooring into wood if I'm not mistaken but I'm not 100% sure we'll just have to wait and find out together and so here I am into the kitchen now and I changed it a little bit I ended up doing away with that little side counter that was there because there wasn't enough space I ended up bringing a Sam onto this lot and having her walk over to see if she can go around that corner because I knew it was really tight right there and she is able to do that and she's also able to sit in every single one of those stools that's behind there and I also put a calendar right here it's like the whiteboard and it's from Discovery University and so I put that here and I used the brown swatch <laughs> just because it matched obviously, but also because it has like a, I don't think it has a calendar. Um, it has something where it's like you're planning like a little trip or something like that. I just love the way that it looks and I love the idea of it being in the kitchen. So like, it looks like they're kind of planning their family, their family activities and stuff on that whiteboard. And I thought that was really realistic. I actually have a whiteboard in my kitchen. And so that's probably why I feel like it's realistic. 
Um, am I the only weirdo that puts a whiteboard in my kitchen and makes plans on it? <laughs> or is that a normal thing? Um, because I don't think I knew anyone that actually did that. But it helps me a lot, so if you need help planning things, I suggest getting a whiteboard and put it in whatever room you frequent the most. I feel like the kitchen is definitely the heart of a home. Um, everyone goes to the kitchen. Whoever lives in the house is going to be going to the kitchen at some part of the day, right? So um, that is my personal opinion. And so this kitchen is very different than kitchens I have done before. Um, it's very much island space and not a whole lot of like regular counter cabinet space, but I think it turned out really unique and really pretty. And I absolutely love how many windows are in that kitchen and the dining room as well. Really the whole house has a lot of window space and I think it's really pretty and definitely true to Mediterranean style houses, I believe anyways. <laughs> and so we are pretty much done with the kitchen. There isn't much more that I do in the kitchen. I do um, put some rugs in there at some point. So in this dining room, I really wanted to use this circular table. I think it really looks really cute. There's a, only thing I didn't like about it was it looked a little rustic. Um, I just wanted to use a circular table, <laughs> to be honest, but I decided to do away with that idea because a little bit later in the build, I, I come back in here to finish off the dining room if I don't do it right now. At some point, I add a hutch onto the other wall. There's a hutch right now on the wall we're not facing, that wall right there, but I end up swapping that out into a hutch that's from the Jungle Adventure pack. And uh, I just like that hutch better. And then over on that wall over there, it's just such a long wall and it needed to be broken up with something. And so I ended up putting a hutch there. And since I put that there, I was not able to have my Sam go around the table with the staircase and everything was a little bit too cluttered. And so I did away with the circular table because I'd rather have the hutch at that point. It's like an extra decor piece, you know? And so I do away with the circular table and I replace it with a regular rectangular table. And I also put a couple high chairs there as well because there are, I decorate one of the rooms into like a twin nursery for two infants. And so, um, yeah, I thought it was really cute. And I also love taking that like tram, not tram, it's like a room divider and it's in the fitting section and I think it is from Get to Work if I'm not mistaken. And I love using that fence right there. Well, it's in the fencing, it's not really a fence. It's definitely like a room divider and I love using that to divide two different floor types. And so there's the wood there and the tile and I hate when it just comes together without a division. And so I grabbed that out of the fencing and put it there to divide the two floors. And I thought it turned out really cute. And so we also have a laundry room in this house. I have come to realize that um, I think every single house that I build that's like full pack um, has a laundry room and I don't know exactly why it just typically there's too many bathrooms in, in the house <laughs> because of the, the floor plan that I do and I don't want to do like every single of these rooms as a bathroom when there is already so many and so they just end up becoming laundry rooms it's not really that I have in my mind that I want to build a laundry room it just happens that way but I'm glad that I did do a laundry room in this house because I was able to use that really bright orange washer and dryer and that's not something I do ever. I think if I do laundry rooms, I typically have them with like a white or a beige, maybe like a black washer and dryer. Very rarely will I use like red or in this case orange or yellow really, but I love using the fun colors when I'm able to. And now we are over into the living room. So this sofa set was from For Rent, I believe. And I think it turned out really cute in this Mediterranean build. Um, I don't know if that's really a Mediterranean style or not, but just the wood look in itself helped this whole build come together. So a lot of the rooms have like this dark wood in it. 
and I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that at first because the outside of the house is like really like white and pink and so I thought I wanted to keep that with the inside as well but the more that I decorated this build the more I just decided to go with the dark wood with like the the objects and stuff you know I just think it's like it makes it pop out you know it makes it seem like a statement piece more than like a piece of white furniture would and so I decided just to stick with the brown and there's like a far more brown options as well and so I almost put like a little toy uh, chest right there but I decided just to put like a little infant uh, play mat there instead and at that time I wasn't planning on having twins in this house it just sort of happened after I put the two high chairs there um, they looked really good there together and that's that's pretty much when I decided this house has a set of twins um, twin infants at that um, that sounds like a nightmare because the infants are kind of hard to take care of I'm not gonna lie I haven't done a lot of play like time with them but the little bit of time that I have had they're quite hard and they when you have growing together they can't crawl right off the bat like when you have base game and so before they can even sit up or anything like that your sims are kind of just placing them anywhere around the lot it reminds me so much of the sims 2 babies where your sim would just leave them wherever on the floor and i always i thought that was so funny when i was growing up for some reason um it's really quite sad though when you think about it now being an adult it's like it's funny because it's like a game but really it's it's sad because it's sad seeing any baby like that you know whether it's a game or not but um now we are over into the bedroom and I cut a little part of this out so I ended up cutting out every single bathroom I think other than the laundry room and that's just because there was really no need to see the bathrooms they're pretty typical I mean I didn't do nothing special in there especially not that master ba bathroom right there um, nothing special so I figured why not just cut it out I could tell you guys about it I mean it's there's a toilet a sink a shower some curtains and like some decor pieces to make it look good enough but yeah definitely no platform work or anything like that so it's it's really nothing special I did add a window though and I thought that was just a really good idea to put a window in there I love having windows and bathrooms in the Sims builds I mean in real life too I love windows and bathrooms just because it makes it feel open I just hated when I was growing up in my parents house they have the window literally in the shower and that's something that was quite you know popular for some reason in Florida houses when they would make like the houses back in like the 50s 60s 70s I don't know about the 50s but the 60s and 70s they would always have the windows in the showers for some reason is that something that is popular where you guys are from as well or was that just a Florida thing I don't know what their thinking was in that um, it's very much a violation of privacy but um, like a regular window in the actual bathroom that's not in the shower and preferably if that window has like the foggy glass then I love that but if you can see straight through the window it's makes me uncomfortable and that actually reminded me of when I I've been like frequently just looking at different houses on like homes.com and Zillow and stuff like that that's something that I do in my spare time for some reason it's just fun and I like to keep an eye on the housing market and stuff just in case I decide to you know buy a house eventually and I just look at what's available in my area that I would be able to afford and stuff like that and I seen this one house it was a picture I didn't go look at it or anything but it was like a huge window that was the size of a human like you could see someone's whole body in there and it was literally in the shower <laughs> and then you could see the neighbor's house like through that window and I was just in awe that that was even a thing like I wonder if they're having a hard time selling that house or not <laughs> um, I know I wouldn't want to buy that house unless I'm planning on filling that window in but I would rather just buy a house that I don't have to do that with, you know? You guys, you guys know what I mean? But um, I just wonder who built that house and what they were thinking. <laughs> 
but uh, we have the infant's room pretty much put together. So I really wanted to put the infant's room as like a gender neutral bedroom. Um, I kind of thought in my head that the infants were twins, like I was saying, and one was a boy and one was a girl. And so I really wanted to stick with like the brown and the greens and like the, you know, almost like a zoo jungle type of thing. And in the end, I think I achieved that. I don't know if I would go as far as to say that was my favorite ever nursery that I've ever built, <laughs> um, but it turned out pretty cute nonetheless. And so we are upstairs now and I am just filling in this hallway space right here. And I wanted to do what I did downstairs and put the curtains in front of the door and the window like that. But for some reason, as you guys could see, it wasn't happening. Um, something with the platforms, it was just glitching out. And so I decided not to put any curtains there. It's just an open window. Luckily it's on the second story. And so you're not gonna have any weirdos, you know, peeping in like um, Peepin' Tom or whatever that is from Wicked Whims. Um, I haven't downloaded Wicked Whims in so long. I used to play with that and I used to think it was hilarious. But also could get quite strange too. Um, <laughs> but, it definitely is a change in gameplay. If you guys are interested in that, then definitely go check it out. But um, we are over into the child's room now, and I kind of thought this was for like a little boy, but really any gender could be in this room as well. And I decided to use that bunk bed for, and the computer desk. Both are from Growing Together, I believe. And I love is that growing? Yeah, I think that's growing together. That's not Dream Home Decorator, is it? Uh, I can't remember to be honest, but I love that bedroom set. I think like the drawings on the bed and the computer desk are so cute. It's obvious that that is for a little child, I would say. And so I also put like a little Void Critter poster in here. I end up moving it in onto the other wall because the other wall was so blank. And I think I put something else there instead where the void critter poster is right now and i love i think i do space theme quite often i think i do it all the time <laughs> and i'm not sure why i just think like the space theme for a little boy or a little girl is so cute and it's so easy also to decorate a child's room with the like the solar planets and rocket ships and you know like space themed and so I think that's another reason why I do it quite often um, and so we're pretty much done with the child's room I also replaced that like blank door with this door that has the posters and the stickers on it I love using that door that is from high school years and I also pull out a big bag chair that is also from high school years and that was pretty much it for the child's room. It turned out pretty cute, pretty decorated, just like I like it. And so we are over into the teen girls room now. This is obviously for a girl. Um, at least that's what I was thinking. I guess a boy could be in here. <laughs> um, you know, I, it doesn't really matter. but. It's, in my mind, I thought it was for a girl and I really wanted to make it look like a teen girl was in this room. And I pulled out that tapestry, tapestry, tapestry. I, I don't know it, what it's really called, <laughs> but I call it tapestry. And I don't get to use that tapestry very often. That came from the high school years pack. It's, and it's like one of the swatches where like the posters are, you know, and I love that tapestry. It's something that I used to have actually. Um, I used to have a blue one like that, but they rip after a while. If you guys have had them, you know that they rip after a while. And so it's long gone now and I need to get a new one. But I also don't put that penguin TV in my teens rooms at all. I usually just put them in the child's room. But I thought it was really cutesy and it really matched this room that I'm decorating right now. And so I decided, let's, why wouldn't a teenager be able to have a penguin TV? Honestly, as a teenager, I probably would have loved to have a penguin TV. <laughs> um, but I don't think I have a TV at all in my bedroom as a teenager. I had a laptop and so I watched Netflix on that and that's really all I needed. I don't think I really wanted a TV. I didn't have a place to put it and 
it's just not something that's important to me. I don't really watch a whole bunch of TV unless there's like a really good show that I like to watch. But right now, there's no shows out there that are good. Um, the shows nowadays aren't like they used to be. Um, but I also pulled out these, like the fabric with the string lights on it. I don't use this ever, but I came across them and I decided to put them over the bed like this and I thought they turned out really cute and so I kept it. And I also had my Sim come up here just to make sure it all worked and it does all work. I, it, that chair, your Sim can also sit in that chair that was right there in front of the clutter pieces. And so it all works. I wish I could have kept the third fabric cloth with the string lights on it, but as you guys could see, I had to do it away with that idea because it just, your Sim couldn't actually sleep on the bed. It couldn't even go on the other side of the bed. It couldn't pass by that at all. Like they should have made it to where your Sim could walk through that, to be honest. Um, that's something that you would be able to do in real life, you know, walk through that clear fabric right there. Um, or like open it up and have and just like walk through it or even just walk through it and you don't have to open it up I would have been fine with that to be honest, but um, I'm sure there would be people out there that wouldn't like that though Because I guess that's not realistic when you just walk through a cloth, but it's better than Not being able to walk through it your sim because then you can't like decorate it how you want to decorate it, you know and so I also I hate when I forget to build the ceiling on some of the like rooms for some reason when you do platforms in the sims it deletes the ceiling I'm not 100% why um, but I did make sure to add that as well and I had no idea what to put on this upper balcony um, so I just decided to put a telescope <laughs> and I, then I called it a day and so down here I'm just putting some couches and I also put like a little coffee table thing in between the couches. Yeah, that little circular thing right there with the plant on it. And up here in the front it was really, really blank and so I wanted to make sure that I added some like tables and stuff. As well as that little palm frond plant that's from the four rent expansion pack. I think that little palm frond plant is so cute. I think I put it on like three tables in this build. <laughs> um, and I put a centronella candle there as well. And then I pulled out like some of these floaties and the water balloon container and plenty of stuff for your sims to do out here. And at some point I put that hopscotch thing. I don't, I think I must have accidentally edited that out for some reason, but there's a hopscotch thing right there on the corner of the house. And in this room, I had absolutely no idea what to put in here. And so I decided, let's just, um, this looks like a house that you could have some really fun parties in, right? And so I decided to put a ping pong table here instead. And I kind of thought like if the parents go out of town on vacation or like a work event, then the teenager would be able to invite their friends over and they could have some like juice pong and fun stuff like that <laughs> and so i thought it was a really cute idea but we are actually in the screenshots guys so i really hope you enjoyed this build if you did make it this far then definitely make sure to leave a like on this video that would help me out a lot so the algorithm will push it to others so that they can view it as well and also make sure you subscribe if you have not done so and i hope you all have a wonderful day and i'll see you in the next one bye guys